Station, and the scene at Kyle Field is phenomenal. Texas A&M is rooted in a rich military tradition, and that warrior mentality won the battle for the Big 12 crown a year ago. Now they're building momentum for what R.C. Slocum hopes is a national championship run. Dante Hall is a triple threat who's on pace to shatter A&M's record for all-purpose yards. But it's the air attack. McCowan to Bethel Johnson that has him zoned out in Aggieland. Turnovers cost Southern Miss a chance to beat Nebraska, but the Golden Eagles have a great air raid of their own, and they are looking for an upset. Nearly 70,000 fans have come to College Station this afternoon on a warm, breezy day in Texas. It's time to call Reveille because Southern Miss is in town, and it's time to play some football. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Oklahoma quarterback, former Oklahoma quarterback, Dean Blevins. And, Dean, I've got to tell you right up front, I'm excited to see Dante Hall because he does so much for Texas A&M. I think he's the best all-purpose back, the running back in the Big 12 Conference. I mean, I thought he was really good before coming down here and seeing him in person and watching a bunch of tape on him. He's better than I thought. He's a rare running back. And I think his greatest attribute, quick feet. He does a lot with his quick feet. Now, we want to introduce you to somebody that's going to be special. That's Adelius Thomas of Southern Miss, and he's going to be on the other side of that line, Dean, looking at Dante Hall. He's phenomenal, and if he had played for a Texas A&M, Nebraska, Florida State, you'd already know about this guy. He was the main reason they held Nebraska to 185 total yards last week, and he did it coming from the edge on a lot of stunts. Watch him disrupt this play as Nebraska likes to run option. The guard will come around. He's on the ground. Second man on the ground on this play, the fullback. And the third, yeah, the quarterback. A.D. is something else. That's an explosion. And I will tell you this, Thomas will blow you up. This is going to be fun. Texas A&M ranked fifth in the country. Southern Miss 2-1 and one, and looking for an upset. The kickoff is coming up next. A&M will receive the opening kickoff. So a look at Brant Hanna and the deep guys. There he is, folks. Dante Hall. And he's back there with Chris Taylor, number seven. But they want to get the ball to Hall. And they want Taylor to lead him up in there. This will be Hall about five yards deep and very wisely. He'll take the touch back and he'll bring it out to the 20. So we'll get our first look at the offense. More importantly, very wisely, Jeff Bauer, the coach at Southern Miss, wants to put his vaunted defense on the line. Randy McCown goes for Texas A&M. I think his strengths, he's very competitive, he is a terrific leader, and he's very tough. His weaknesses might be that he's not really a pure passer and tends to be inconsistent. Well, he's 8-1 as a starter, folks. McCowan saw limited time in 96, split time with Brandon Streeter in 97, or Stewart, rather, and he earned the starting role last year, broke his collarbone. He was 6-1 when that happened. He's 1-2 this year. Here's Hall outside. And the tackle made by Roy McGee, so a couple yards there. Chile's starting lineups for A&M. Take a look at the offensive line. Shea Holder, Chris Valletta, Seth McKinney, Mimuli and Andy Vincent. It is a huge offensive line. It averages 300 pounds with three seniors. The wide receivers, Cole has been relatively quiet. He's looking for a breakout game. Taylor has nine catches, averages 26 yards a touch in the backfield. McCowan, Dante Hall. Tiki Hardeman is out with a sprained ankle, so Toombs gets the start today. Again, they run the ball to the right side, and this is Toombs. And every time Toombs touches the ball today, it will sound like they're booing as they go ahead and yell Toombs. Defensively now, the Golden Eagles have been fantastic. Up front, the guy to watch is Thomas with 27 career sacks. We go on the linebackers. These guys are active at linebacker because uh, Trey Hyand and Slaughter and McGee will run to the football, and everything funnels to them. And in the secondary, Parrish is the best cover guy. Barnes calls the formations. Williams, the sophomore. Walls, the fastest on the team. So it's third down and long. McCowan has pressure, throws into the corner, has a man, and it's incomplete. Caught out of bounds, I do believe. Good defense. It was Bethel Johnson who made the catch, but he was bobbling as he went out. Cedric Scott had the pressure up front on McCowan, and that made the difference. Tough throw for McCowan. That's about as hard a first throw as you'll see a quarterback have to make coming out of the box. So Shane Lechner... An All-American candidate, averaging 44 yards last year, just a little less than that right now. We'll be kicking to Sherrod Gideon, who is deep for Southern Miss. 
Ball's on the ground, and it looks like Lechner's going to get enough for the first and then some. Out across the 40 to the 45-yard line. Well, folks, that was not planned, but he picks up 22 yards. They'll move the chains, and Texas A&M will be rolling. Well, Kyle Lednitsky had gone a whole career snapping good snaps. That's not a bad snap. He just dropped it. But it turns out great for Texas A&M because they had the return on, and Southern Miss wasn't ready. In fact, you know, they had gone, Lednitsky had gone 538 consecutive air-free snaps. This is a new guy walking on. Well, that'll help Lechner. The first down will help Lechner in his All-American candidacy, not the drop snap. That's right. Nonetheless, first down, Texas A&M. Taylor in motion. They look that way. Here is Taylor. In territory knocked out just inside the 46-yard line by Terrence Parrish. Hey, Dino, take a look at the Dell Game Solutions. Dell Game Solutions for Texas A&M. I think number the first thing they have to do is make some big plays because they're going to get a lot of chances. They're going to have negative plays because of the risk-reward type of defense and protect their quarterback, number 15. Second down and short. A&M here can open up the playbook. There he is again. Two bangs his way down across the 45. He'll be just short of the first down. How about the Dell game solutions for the Southern Miss defense, Dean? Well, they need to do what they did last week. They don't really need any solutions, I don't think, but stop Dante Hall. Easier said than done, and they'll be trying to disguise and confuse Texas A&M with some things in the secondary and some things that get the, get the offensive line of Texas A&M a little confused. They move people around all the time. This defense has given up only 27 points in three games, most of which came against the subs when the games were already decided. It's third down and less than a yard. McCowan around the end has some room. The first down inside the 40 to the 37-yard line goes Brandon McCowan of Jacksonville, Texas. Great play call here because Texas A&M has everyone right here. There are no wide receivers. It is a power formation, and what they're going to do is fake it up the middle. Everyone thinks they're coming inside with the power game. Nope, around the corner, and Randy McCowan has to use a little speed there, but mostly he got outside by the great play call. Well, they needed less than a yard. McCowan picked up seven. First down, Aggies. There it is, there it is, there it is. Lead again to the 30. This time it goes to Chris Cole, the senior from Orange, Texas. Cole was the go-to guy last year and led the team with 38 receptions. He is a big play threat, but coming into this game, Dean just two catches and five yards. Well, if he has a big year, he has a chance to shatter the receptions and yardage records, and as well as they're throwing it, and as much as they're throwing it here early this season, maybe he'll have a chance at that. Again, second down and short. They call this a waste down, knowing they can always come back on third to get the first. Ball is hit immediately. He'll come up about... A yard short. T.J. Slaughter with the tackle there. And T.J. Slaughter is the leading tackler for the Golden Eagles. Well, you're right. A waist down. There's Slaughter. He is a very active player. Runs sideline to sideline. He's a guy that will clog it up in the middle exactly like he did right then. That's what they count on him doing. Yeah. But that is a waist down. You know, you, you th it's easier to call him up here. But that's a down you really want to go deep or do something creative. And that time they took the conservative approach. Well, as you look at that picture, you now have his number. He's the nucleus of that defense, Slaughter. He lives up to his name. Again, third down and short here. Here's Hall. Stumbles across. Just enough for the first down. Dante Hall. He is lightning quick. Honorable mention, All-American. He's a hide-and-seek runner. Hides behind those big guys up front. Seeks the opening in the line. He's 5'8", 196. And looking at his thighs the other day, they're the size of, of most people's waists. And there's no fat on this guy. He's not a surprise. He was the leading rusher last year with over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns for the Aggies. First down for A&M. Boy, the Aggies will throw the ball now. To the tight end they go, and it's complete to Derek Brown. Just very methodical. Broughton is 6'1", 247 pounder. He's just a junior, big, solid guy. Third year tight end, high school All-American as you look at
Jeff Bauer. He knows he's going to be up against it today, but he is an outstanding coach. <laughs> Again, it's second down, and they need only three. Toons carrying tackles. Now, Slaughter will get credit for the tackle, but Toons carried him an extra three yards. Well, and he's only a backup. You know, you mentioned Tiki Hardeman out. Toombs is a big guy. He weighs at least 265, and although Slaughter was there, this guy, number five, is a tank. He's a true sophomore out of Kilgore, and he had a breakout game last year in winning the Big 12 championship game, or beating Nebraska, rather, in a huge game for the Aggies. Another first down. Toombs will have that chance today as well with Tiki Hardeman on the sideline with that bad ankle. Everybody jumps, so very wisely McCown tucks it away and carries out the play anyway. And he's down close to another first down if this ball is against, if the penalty is against Southern Miss. And it is. Well, that was a great heads-up play by the center, 77, Seth McKinney. Now, when you get the defense to jump offside, stop it right there. The center right there, any time a defense comes off offsides, he immediately snaps the ball. Sometimes the quarterback's not ready, you still get the call. If the quarterback's ready and heads up, you pick up positive yardage. Very I, would, nice. I would decline the penalty here, and that's exactly what they do. So it'll be second down and short again. It seems like every single time they picked up six, seven, eight yards on first down. Second down and short. Toons to the five, to the three. Still on his feet. They'll mark it at the four. <laughs> he is a load. As Dean said, he's over six feet tall, 265 pounds, and just a sophomore, a growing lad. Well, he's getting a chance right now. He's already had 11 starts in his brief career, and he's doing it against a very good defensive front. Now, keep in mind, this defense is the same defense that in 14 series against Nebraska forced them to 11 series of three and out. I mean, that is phenomenal for eight first downs. And they've got another first down. Fifth first down of this drive. Watch up front, the blocking. Texas A&M getting a good forward push. There you see Michael De La Torre, number 87, a tight end as a redshirt freshman who's a terrific blocker. And you talked about that big front. They're doing a lot of zone blocking today because they don't know where the defense is going to be lining up. So just block your zone. This offense has speed and bulk, and A&M is throwing the ball at record pace. It's first down and goal for the Aggies. Hardeman, who's into the ball game for the first time, is down to the two. So Tiki Hardeman will see some action today. He's the all-conference fullback, the team leader and tough runner, a parade All-American in high school. He missed the Tulsa game with that high ankle sprain. He was begging R.C. Slocum to get in this match. So he's in. Well, this is big for Southern Miss. I mean, they really need to stop this bunch. If they let them go all the way on the first series, that wipes away some of the momentum from last week. This is the jumbo package. It's Toombs and Hardeman both in there with their tight ends. And there's absolutely nothing for Tiki Hardeman. Boy, they came in a hurry. Scott and Nix and Slaughter again, along with our guy Adelius Thomas. Adelius Thomas, 6'2 and a half, 262. You know, Dean, that play right there is exactly what you drew up in the pregame. He took on the blocker, he pushed him back into Hardeman. He just exploded him and blew it up. He has a great feel, great athlete, and very intelligent. So here we go now, a big play for the defense and the Aggies as well. It's third down and goal. Again, they go with power, and they're not going to get there. Toombs will come up two yards short. Should they go for it, Dean? I would think they would. They, although they want to walk away with points, and that's what R.C. Slocum's going to do. He's going to take the points, and he's going to say, guys, you let me call it down here, and you, know, you guys call the game up there. I think you try to seize momentum at the very beginning. I say that's a victory for the defense Absolutely. if they hold them for three after five first downs in that first drive. And this is what Terrence Kitchens will attempt the field goal it's from 19 yards out the holder is Shane Leckler who started it all after he dropped the snap on a punt attempt and picked up the first high snap there field goal is good the Aggies are on the board they score first it's three nothing a and m number 12 Eric Stanford he's your 12th man today he is a walk-on but he's a football player and he'll 
get down there and try to get into the activity. Beautiful setting. This is a, a wonderful setup down here. The practice field grass was wonderful. It's even better on this turf. There's a look at Sean Mills, 83. Leckler is kicking off. It's a high short kick. Mills will not be able to get to it. Here's a big opening. And on the return is Damian Mc or Joey Pinkston, rather. And Pinkston returns at 34 yards. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dodge. So Southern Miss, great field position to start off. Kelly is your quarterback. First down, goal, Golden Eagles. Kelly's going to have a tough time checking off today because of the crowd noise. Here's Nix. Big hole on the left side. He's up close to midfield and actually into AM territory. Starting lineups the Bill, uh, for Southern Miss, the Chili starting lineups. Brian Bell, Shedrick Blackman gets the start today. He was hurt last week. He steps back in today. Zeb Landers, Billy Clay, and Jeremy Bridges. Not a big offensive line. It is young as well, but it averages 295. Gideon, Pinkston, Fowler, and Mashoda are your skilled players. Derek Nix, the one setback, and Jeff Kelly is your quarterback. He's a 6'2 sophomore. And they'll have the first down. So Derek Nix, with two carries, crosses uh, down the 45 and down inside the 45 for the first. Chile's defensive lineup for AM. The wrecking crew up front. All three guys are strong. They can run. Bernard, Edwards, and Flemings. The linebackers were always stars at AM. That win is gone, but Glenn is a serious force. Anthony, Frazen, and Bradley, all very talented. And in the secondary, Webster, Jennings, Curry, and of course, Jameson. And Jennings back there at safety. First down, Southern Miss. Nicks again. Nothing. Great defense by Roiland Bradley, who came through cleanly and made the stop. For Southern Miss to be able to pull off this upset today, I think that this guy, Kelly, has to have a big game. His strengths, he's very smart, and he sees the field very well. Weaknesses, though, sometimes he gets antsy in the pocket like he did against Nebraska, and he's got to make plays in crunch time. He has the ability, but he's got to come through, and if not, Cable Davis will be inserted pretty early, Tim. Well, he's been working on that consistency all week. He told us last night. He loves Gideon and Pinkston. They're the two pop pass catching guys for him, and he may be looking for him right here. Three step drop throws on schedule, too high, and almost picked off. It was intended for Danny Fowler, a talented young receiver who was the slot guy. Take a look at the Dell Game Solutions. Getting. Kelly in, in rhythm is really important for Southern Miss, and I think that both teams have to contain the, blitz, con the blitzes rather, from the other group, and Texas A&M will blitz virtually every other down. We're going to try to keep track of it up here, but it's kind of hard to do. Well, I guarantee you they'll be coming now. The wrecking crew loves to put pressure on a guy when it's third down and ten. They split everybody wide. Nix is the lone setback. Here they come. Kelly tries to roll out of there and won't make it. He's sacked. Jay Brooks, the defensive back with the sack. And it's a loss of 11, a huge play for the wrecking crew. Well, you called it. It was a blitz. They had a nine-man front. And off the corner, you have Jay Brooks. He ran down the quarterback from behind. And, I mean, it's going to be a sea of maroon all afternoon because they like to get after the quarterback. And Kelly's just got to turn that into something better than a 15-yard loss. So Jamie Purser, who averages 45 yards a punt, will try to back up the Aggies. High spiraling punt. Inside the 10, this will go into the end zone for a touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20. A 56-yard punt by Purser. A&M will have it on the 20 first down when we return. Back at Kyle Field, Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins with you. Texas A&M leading Southern Miss 3-0. A&M had a spectacular drive in its first series. Actually, uh, the Golden Eagles held them, but then on the punt play, the snap was dropped and Lechner got the first down. Then they moved all the way down inside the 10, and Golden Eagles had the first points in the first quarter, scored against them this year, 3-0. 17-play drive that first one. We'll see what AM does here. Here's Hall. 
I'll tell you, this defense <laughs> is second and none. Right now, let's go back to New York to get an update on that Purdue Northwestern game. Hey, John, how's Drew Brees doing? He's special. I shouldn't have asked. Flanker screen. Johnson has nowhere to run again. The Golden Eagles all over him. This defense, we were going to tell you, held Nebraska to just 185 total yards. Nebraska's offense went three plays and out 11 times in 14 possessions, as Dean told you earlier. And they are starting to gather themselves now after that 17-play drive that gave up the three points, but they're playing aggressively now, Dean. Well, and I think the stopping A&M from scoring a touchdown. Yeah, they gave up three points. They marched it down the field, but they're playing very, very well. They've regrouped in the last seven snaps. They've played extremely well defensively. So it's third down and 12. Got them bunched right out here, three wide receivers. McCowan looks across the middle. He's trying to find Taylor. He's in trouble. The ball's loose. Taylor's down. It looks like the Golden Eagles have it, and they do. So Southern Miss forces the turnover, and the offense for the Golden Eagles will have great field position. And guess who? Adelius Thomas and T.J. Slaughter. Well, the pass rush is just terrific from these guys. you got Thomas. You're looking at him right there. He makes it look easy, doesn't he? What athleticism and strength from a guy that played basketball a couple of years. He has a 40-inch vertical leap. He's phenomenal. Thomas got there first. Slaughter got there second. Forced the fumble. No huddle attack now for Southern Miss. Nix, the lone setback. Going to the corner. He'll pick up five. It's complete. That was dangerous. Pinkston will take it down to the nine-yard line with that catch. Jason Webster, 39, makes a break on this ball. It's a short route out to the right. After an audible, 39 in terrific position. Perfect throw, perfect catch. Hard to beat, though. Pinkston's 21st catch of the year. Second down, Golden Eagles. It's deafening in here. Nick stopped at the line of scrimmage. Cornelius Anthony took him all the way back to the 22-yard line, but his forward progress should be right around the 15. Defense has played with emotion. And AM is showing some there. Boy, this place is rocking already. Third down, they need seven. Five-step drop. Looks to the corner. He's going to Pinkston. No good. Pinkston thought he had it. Well, this is a close call here. Pinkston's a terrific receiver at 6'2". This is a great opportunity for him to come down with the ball on a quick fade route to the corner. He throws it up, and it is terrific defense, although that was a catchable ball. Sammy Davis, a true freshman out there, number 22, on the, on the play, and it was good officiating. Grant Hanna to attempt a 27-yard field goal to tie it up. Snap is good. The hold is down. Plenty of leg, but it's off to the right. Nothing, Aggies. Nothing over Southern Miss, but man, the Golden Eagles were knocking on the door. The wrecking crew, the defense for Texas A&M held, so it's first down for the A&M offense. Dante Hall with a big haul left side. The hole was behind Vincent and Amuli. Jeff Bauer, good look at him, the coach who was a star quarterback at Southern Miss and has done just a terrific job in Hattiesburg. 
Been there nine full seasons. Seems like he's been in the program most of his 46 years. Straight ahead they go with the fullback. And Toombs bangs it out to the 28-yard line. Well, coming up Sunday night on ESPN, Michael Strahan in the New York on ABC. Niners won eight in a row on Monday night. They love it there. Third down, they need one. Again, the defense getting a little anxious at the line of scrimmage. This is Hall. Side steps one tackler. And Bulls his way across the 30 for the first down. Dante Hall. Elias Thomas was knocked out of that play. You know, we had our two stars on that play playing together. 97 was Adelius Thomas. He's coming from right there. And then you have the star back here in the back, in the, the, the running back. Here we go. Watch Adelius Thomas will have contact right there. Has a chance to make the tackle. But he sheds him. And that's great running right there. First down, here's Hall again. Boy, they're making it tough on him. This is going to be a long afternoon because the Golden Eagles pursuit so well. They're, yeah. The pursuit on defense is outstanding. And again, Thomas was knocked out. Hey, tomorrow at 9 Central Time, cockroach defense. And talking with Street, Steve Crankthorpe, the offensive coordinator from AM, he said that they're sort of like you've seen cockroaches, you turn the light on, you turn it back on turn it off you turn it back on they scatter and go everywhere that's the way their defense is the end of the first quarter with Texas A&M leading Southern Miss 3 nothing this is a pretty good one well we told you in the beginning Dante Hall is the main force for the Texas A&M Aggies you see what he has done for his career 4,522 all-purpose yards but today it's been tough going seven carries just eight yards Second down and call it 11. McCowan pump face has backside pressure and he's sacked. T.J. Slaughter will get credit for that sack. We told you Slaughter's the nucleus of the defense. He's got that linebacker attitude, very physical player, and he's got bad intentions. Well, he does, and that's an opportunity there because of what happened from the defense that was not able to take advantage of. We're going to stop this in a minute here as you see McCowan come back, and you have out on the flat. Stop it right there. Quarterback right here is trying to get the ball to out of our screen. Hall is wide open, but if you don't have time to throw it, it doesn't matter if he's wide open. They'll come back to that later. Out of the shotgun, McCowan goes deep. He's looking for Hodge, and it's overthrown. Correction, that was Chris Cole. And A&M will have to punt. McCowan really wasn't even close with that. Pretty good coverage by Walls on Cole. And so I think McCowan just threw it away. Well, it's amazing, though, if one player breaks down or you have a superior play on defense that disrupts something, you get a sack, it costs six points. And that what that's what Texas A&M had available to them on second down. Leckler to punt. Sherrod Gideon and Sean Mills are deep for Southern Miss. This is a high tail wagger. It's taken by Gideon. And absolutely nothing is there. A 52-yard punt and nothing on the return. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the wide trends in the country, Tamlin, right here. Jeff Kelly on first down. Sends Fowler in motion. Three-step drop, throws out into the flats. He's got a blocker, he's got it complete. It's Gideon out to the 33-yard line. He'll be about three yards short of the first. Nice-looking play there by Southern Miss. Yeah, they did a great job of getting Gideon the ball, and here's a terrific wide receiver. This guy, Mel Kuyper, the guru of the draft, rates him as the fourth wide receiver in the upcoming draft. And there you see Gideon's all-time ranks first, first, first. Pretty impressive. Well, he was suspended one game, came into this game now with 12 receptions, two touchdowns. He just got his 13th. He is their all-time leading receiver. Second down and short. They go to Nix. He's not going to get there. Picks up one. Good penetration by Harold Robinson. You're going to see a lot of shifting by the Golden Eagles. And from a, the A&M's perspective, that's not as challenging as having a lot of different personnel groups. They can adjust to the shifts more easily than they can if they run four or five players in every play. And that's what they've seen a lot earlier in the year. Third down, they need one. This place gets loud when the wrecking crew's trying to do some business. 
Knicks. Looking for a block, won't get it. Jason Webster protecting the corner, makes the tackle, and Southern Miss will have to punt. A loss of three. That's Aggie defense right there. Swarm the football. I really question whether you can go east or west and get ready to stop this in just a minute. Stop it right there, please. East and west right here. I mean, that's not gaining any pop yards. Now you have all this traffic coming. Watch the Maroons swarm the football. Two getting, but there are five more in the vicinity. Jason Purser's first punt today was over 50 yards. He'll need a pretty good one here. He's standing at his own 16. Dante Hall, Jason Webster, a for a &M. This is not a good kick. But he gets a big bounce, and it'll go out of bounds. Inside the 30, they'll mark it at the 26. So that's a 44-yarder. It's still 3-0. Aggies. R.C. Slocum, a quality, congenial, underrated coach. He's as good as any. As a matter of fact, now in his 11th year at AM, he has built one of the best-run programs in all of college football. Really has it going here. 96 wins during his tenure. Here's Dante Hall, and again, he's taken down immediately. Absolutely nothing there. His eighth carry, he has nine yards. You know, R.C., speaking of uh, what he has done, he, he is a terrific guy, and, and he hasn't won the national championship. But, you know, if you look around the country at some of the coaches who have been in the business for a long time, they really didn't have success until later in their career. Look at Tom Osborne, championship. Bobby Bowden, late. Even Joe Paterno. Not that he's old. He's only 54. Coach Slocum, but uh, he's good. Second down and long from McCallum. He's got to complete the haul. He's a fine receiver. We told you is all-purpose, and he'll be two yards short of the first. Well, we want to check up and find out what Ron Dane's doing, so let's go back to New York and John Saunders. Getting better every week. Carr's got him going again. Cowan's close. There is a flag, and I believe this is going to be a holding call against the Aggies. You're right. Our referee today is Hal Dowden. He's from Hevener, Oklahoma, retired funeral director, and he's been a referee for 12 years. He's a good one. One of the reasons McCown was, is the quarterback out there is that he makes plays like he just made, although it'll be called back. He's a scrappy competitor. I said that correctly, didn't I? Hevener, Oklahoma? Hevener, Oklahoma, you bet. <laughs> Holding on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. So it's fourth down, and the Aggies will punt. R.C. Slocum is going to get the offense off the field, I do believe. He wants a clarification on the, well, on the I think, ruling. I think the, the mix-up here, McCown is saying, hey, I got the first down. And apparently he didn't, and that's why they're turning the, the penalty down. All right, here's your Aflac trivia question today. Who holds a single-game record for total offense in Southern Miss history? Uh, do you know it, partner? If well, I thought do, I did. Hold it to yourself okay. now. We'll have the answer <laughs> What do for I you. win? <laughs> we'll have the answer for you coming up. There's a look at Shane Le Leckler, and uh, he's kicking to Sean Mills. Mills is standing at his own 23-yard line. Good snap. Leckler gets off a of boomer this time. This is a rocket. This is a rocket through the end zone. Folks, that is a 66-yard punt. That's a punt pass and kick winner. <laughs> oh, my. Texas A&M had one field goal attempt and made that one. Southern Miss had one field goal attempt and missed it. Wind is a factor now. Absolutely. That last one went 66. The three punts with the win, 56, 52, 66. The one against it, only 43. You can see those flags were straight out. First down, Southern Miss. Kelly's in trouble. He runs it and picks up four. Southern Miss is for real. Absolutely they are. I knew they could play defense. They've got to figure out a way to score something on offense. Now, one of the concerns is Jeff Kelly. Stop it right there. Now, if he can sit, stay right there, quarterback. Don't get nervous. you got guys here. They're, they're not in your way. Stand back there strong. Look at the coverage. Find out what you can do. That's pulling the ball down too quickly. He cannot do that. Southern Miss had a great game against Nebraska last week, lost to 20-13, but that was because of a lot of turnovers. 
so far they have not turned the ball over. Here's Kelly on second down. Throws it out to Knicks. Is it incomplete? Is it a lateral? They say it's a touchdown, Texas A&M. But hold on. The linesman says no way. He's going to call it incomplete. Cornelius Anthony came with the pressure. Boy, that was close. One official was saying touchdown. The head linesman was saying incomplete, and now the referee will go with the linesman. Crowd doesn't like that at all. Well, the referee needs instant replay here because it's too close to call, I believe. I've had a chance to see it a couple times already. And we'll stop it when the quarterback releases it and mark that yardage. Stop it right there. So he throws it from right there on about the 16. Very close, Tim. Well, the bottom line is it brings up third down and a taxi ride for Southern Miss. Kelly is swarmed under at the 10. No chance at all. A loss of 12. Well, there's a reason that Kelly gets antsy. Number one, the secondary's doing a great job. Secondly, look at the defensive pressure. Texas A&M puts pressure on the quarterback as, as good as any team, as well as any team in the country, Tim. Boy, Jason Glenn got there in a heartbeat. A&M plays such an aggressive scheme. The players just love it. This is a short kick again. It'll be fielded and lost. The ball's loose, and A&M gets it back. Jason Webster tried to take it on the run and couldn't handle it. But the Aggies get it back after a 34-yard punt. And look who it is, Dante Hall. Well, this was feast or famine in the kick game right here. He elects to catch this ball on the run. If he catches it, Tim, he may go all the way. He certainly gets it down around the 30-yard line for Southern Miss, but it's too big a gamble. Dangerous play by Webster, but look at the play that Hall makes to get the ball back. That's a great job, and Texas A&M has two guys back to return punts. Most teams only have one. If they only had one, there's no way they recover that. Certainly the best starting field position of the afternoon for A&M. Out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the left. That's where he's looking. He's going in the direction of Johnson. Down inside the 25-yard line. Bethel Johnson has a first down. The Aggies will move the chains. That's a pickup of 21. This is a tough throw. This is a great throw and catch. Bethel Johnson has terrific hands. He barely gets this one inside. That's a great throw. He gets both feet in, actually only needed one. And R.C. Slocum says he's as talented as any player he's had in his 27 years in association with A&M. Boy, that's saying something, too. First down, A&M. Toons. He carries tackles to the 20. A&M trying to spread you out a little bit and then gash you. They don't want to go east and west like we showed a while ago because like the A&M defense, the Golden Eagles are extremely fast as well. You won't outrun them trying to get around the corner very often. It's A.D. time, I think, Tim. 97 time. Second down and call it five. There he is. Hall. Looking for a hole. Can't find one. And again, he's taken down for a loss. This will be a loss of one, so it'll bring up third down and six. Well, A.D. didn't make the tackle, but he did his job. And he talked to us last night in saying that, you know, every player has a responsibility, an assignment, a lineman assignment on every play. And on that play, his job was to contain. And he did his job, and other players made the tackle. Adelius Thomas got caught in the elevator last night. The elevator got stuck <laughs> between floors. He ripped the doors open and had to climb out. The elevator was the underdog in that deal. Third down and six. McCowan over the middle. It's going to be close to the first. I don't think he got enough. It's going to be awfully close, depending on the mark. Is Chris Taylor close enough for the first? A&M says they've got it. They definitely want to go for it if they don't have enough. Well, it was a great play by Rover, Leo Barnes, and McCowan looking over to see whether they're going to go for it or not. And the crowd goes wild, meaning, of course, that they will. They bring in their jumbo set. They'll line up as many tight ends as they suited up. Broughton, Delator, Kazmierski, they all come into the game. It'll be fourth down and one when we return. But right now, Southern Miss wants to take a timeout and talk it over. They trail by three.
touchdown play failed. There was no question what Randy McCowan wanted to do. He's yelling, go for it. Well, how far do they have to go on fourth down? As you look at Slaughter, he has nine tackles already. He's the nucleus of the defense, and he's going to have to make the stop, and it's going to have to be that short. McCowan has the first down and much, much more to the 11, down to the 6, and McCowan's got the first down, and they've got first down and goal. Kind of a risky call. you got to like it if you're an A&M fan because it's converted. They love to go option in short yardage or goal line situations. Defense is cramped to the middle. They, they, they come in so much that they're give, there's a lot of room for the outside. That time it was set up for the quarterback to easily get around the corner. Brilliant call now, huh? Good thing McGee made that tackle. Right, he was in the end zone. That was the last player that could have made the stop. You know, I, I like that call, but it's an aggressive call. That's the way they call plays here now, more so than ever. If he doesn't make that, the momentum's back to Southern Miss. They're only down three points, and they had the ball on the 15-yard line. It's not like you're down on the four when you make that decision to go. Ball start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. You know, it's that kind of mistake that'll drive McCowan crazy. And it'll drive Steve Craigthorpe crazy, too, the offensive coordinator. There he is. See, that's a mental mistake. So now instead of first and goal at the five, they move it all the way back past the ten. The only thing good about being back there is you have more room to operate in your pass game. But you never want to give up a five for that. That's the first penalty of the game. It's first and goal from just inside the 11. The option, Hall, left side. They have all bottled up this entire ball game. Leo Barnes, the rover, who plays like a corner and a linebacker, came up and made the tackle. That is 10 carries now, Dean, and just six yards for Hall. Well, look and at look the what the defense there. is doing. Yeah. Coming into today, there you see 1.7 and 4.8 today for AM. Now, the last play, Leo Barnes made the play, and against option so often, it's going to be one of those safeties that's required to make that play. The speed of Barnes made the play. Second down and goal. Hodge is the lone receiver at the top of your screen. Two backs. McCowan with plenty of time looking for his tight end. Dropped. It was intended for Broughton, and he could not hold on. That ball was perfectly thrown. It hit him between the eight and the two. Wow. Well, they lost a couple of great tight ends to the NFL. Watch 71 here. The block by Valletta, by the way, as he gives his quarterback, McCowan, all day long. See 71 coming out there, right there? He gives him all day. Broughton, this is a tough throw and a super throw. Got to catch that. There was a hand across the body that got in his way of the vision of the ball, and that's why he dropped it. Now they send Goins and Taylor to the right, the top of your screen. Third down and goal. Pump fake. Backside pressure. McGowan escapes, looks for a block. Now he drops the ball, and it goes out of bounds at the nine. That's a fumble. That's not a forward pass. And it's a lot of indecision as well as Walls was putting a lot of pressure on that play, number 19. Timmy does a great job of Walls avoiding the tackle, the cornerback blitz. Comes down, he sees it. Do I throw it? Do I not? Do I throw it? And it actually just slipped out of his hand. So the field goal team will come on. Terrence Kitchens, who hit 250 yarders against Louisiana Tech, comes on for A&M. He was just given a scholarship Thursday afternoon. R.C. Slocum called him to his office, gave him a scholarship. And this is why. Another field goal, 28 yards, it's good. And Texas A&M leads Southern Miss by six. A&M's defense ranks number one nationally against the run. The defense for Southern Miss had given up only 27 points coming in. This is another short kick. Joey Pinkston is out to the 27-yard line. Well, next Saturday, breaking up the dream team. <laughs> We're going with Brad. I've got Gary. Well, we'll have fun, but it'll be good to be back with you the week after. That will be fun. Here's Kelly on first down. Gives it to Nix, and again, he's hit in a hurry by a lot of red jerseys. The maroon is all over him. Peroni will get credit for the tackle. He got there first. Oh, we asked you the uh, Aflac trivia question. Who holds the single game record for total offense in Southern Miss history? And the answer is? I'll give you a hint. His wife's in the stands. She's a beautiful blonde named Debbie, and she's the wife 
of the head coach. There's Debbie right there with the sunglasses on. It's Coach Bauer, Jeff Bauer. He was the quarterback and racked up all those numbers. He was a heck of a football player, but I think he outpunted his coverage in that marriage. <laughs> She's gorgeous. <laughs> this will be against the offense. They have, they have changed that with Cowboys. Right in the snap, false start, on the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. You know, we talk about Debbie Bauer, and don't think that coaches and their wives are immune from tragedy. They lost a, a daughter, Kristen, a couple of years ago in a one-car accident. It's the hardest thing they've ever had to deal with, and I really respect this couple, but it has been very, very difficult. Second down and very, very long. The Golden Eagles need 16 yards for the first. Three-step drop throw on schedule. It is complete to Gideon. He's out to the 30-yard line. That'll be nine yards short of the first. Jason Webster was the man covering. Good throw there by Jeff Kelly. Well, it really is, and he, he is a year to not be doubled up every play. In the past, last year, Jeff Bauer told me he was doubled up on every single play, but with the emergence of Todd Pinkston, or the success of him, I should say, uh, he's not doubled up, and that makes it a lot easier. Third down and nine. Fowler in motion. Pressure coming backside to Kelly, throws deep. Got a man, got a step, incomplete. It was intended for Todd Pinkston, and there is a flag. And Kelly's shaking up. That's the best play of the afternoon for the quarterback, Kelly, as you see him a little shaken up because that guy, Glenn, was all over him. But what a terrific throw. Gave his man a chance. This will be against Texas A&M. Jason Glenn had three sacks last week. The Aggies had 12 men on the field. Sometimes it's easier to defend that way. Well, the 12th man uh, got a little over anxious. Maybe he went out early. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Glenn, though, is outstanding, isn't he? He's a converted safety. You know, you, you wish you could tell Kelly what we see, the, the people at home, and we can see up here. Whoa, you don't see that backside. But to his credit, he hung in there, stayed in the pocket, and threw almost a strike. Threw it a couple of inches too long, but he gave Pinkston a chance. I get a kick out of people that call him Aaron's little brother. Because he ain't little. No, he's not little. Might be younger. He's destined for stardom, 23. So with the penalty, with illegal participation, it's a first down for Southern Miss. And again, they've got the, uh, the pass to get incomplete, so they pick up three. Well, that guy right there, 39, Jason Webster, is perhaps the best corner cover in the or cover man in the, in the uh, business in, in the Big 12 Conference. And we saw a couple of good ones in Damon Wheeler from Colorado, and Nebraska has some great ones. But Webster can get after you. If you make the catch, he's a sure tackler as well, and you only pick up five. Gideon has three catches. It was a pickup of five. It'll be second down and five for the Golden Eagles. Mashota moved to the other side of tight end. Here's Gideon again. He loses a yard. Last week against Nebraska, Kelly took a licking. Every time he dropped back to pass, even if he got it off, he was hit hard. Now there were six turnovers against Nebraska, including two returned for touchdowns. That cost him the game. But Kelly came out of it banged and bruised. He'll never forget it because he thought Southern Miss had a chance to win. They did, and he felt like with those turnovers, he cost him the game. He could be right, but they played well otherwise. Third down and long across the middle, close to the first down. Pinkston is going to be awfully close. Correction, that's Fowler. He's up to the 46-yard line. Fowler. Now, now watch the quarterback. We're going to emphasize Kelly and his mechanics here because they worked with him all week. They want him to try to be set. He feels the pressure. See him going back? He's not set, but he still throws a strike. That's a sign of being a good athlete and having a nice, strong arm. Not enough, though, for the first down. No, but it'll be fourth and one, and Southern Miss wants to talk it over, so they'll take a timeout here. That's their second. 
And with 2.15 remaining in the first half, this is a big call. Yes, it is. Very big call, and we've seen A&M go for it a couple of times, but not here out at midfield. And, you know, we, we talk about how much a guy needs to stand in the pocket, but it's so easy for you at home and for us up here to talk about that, and so much tougher down there. Trust me, when you see eight, nine guys lined up in the line of scrimmage and blitzes coming after you, it's hard to hang in there. At halftime, it's the Valvoline Halftime Report with John Saunders and Terry Bowden you week by week all the way to the title game. Well, they were messing around with their personnel. They're ma making, uh, trying to get Texas A&M to think that they were going for it, but now they bring out the kick team. Which accomplishes not a whole lot. Jamie no. Purser comes on and he will punt. But if you're on defense, the ball's in your territory, you've got to be aware of the fake. Good snap. Purser gets off a kick that's wobbly. It'll hit inside the 10. They've got a chance to down it. Did they save it? No, it's a touchback. So a 46-yard punt. It's a touchback. They'll bring the ball out to the 20, and that's where A&M will have it with 2.07 remaining. Now they tell you not to feel the ball inside the 10. He knew he was close, so he yeah. let it go. That was the one you just have to feel. I mean, you, you have to, to, to hope that if it lands on the 11 or 12 that it doesn't go in. That time it was a close but good decision. Jason Webster almost got there. Hey, a reminder coming up, ABC Sports is back at the track as Juan Montoya. Oh, he's got good numbers, 6 and 9 today, but he only has 27 yards. 27 yards. Here's McCowan on first down. Got a man, it's complete. Hodge is out across the 30. Steve Prackthorpe, the offensive coordinator, does a good job of moving the quarterback. You don't want him to be a sitting duck back there. McCown throws it pretty well on the run, so they run some boots and some sprint outs. That time he had plenty of time to find a receiver. So this move change, pick up the first. McCown bobbles the snap. Here comes pressure. McCown hit hard from behind by Slaughter and Stewart and Trahan. Everyone got a piece. You're sure calling 34's name a lot, aren't you? And also Todd Trahan. Hey, there's great hands. Now that's that's a snap that almost, and that throws your timing off, but that almost could have been a, a devastating play for a and McCown throws it up to midfield. He's got another completion. And Leroy Hodge has his seventh catch of the year. Hustle up to the line, don't let much clock go. Terrific throw, just when you think McCown maybe isn't a real proficient passer, he hums one in like that. That's really good. Well, they stop the clock to move the chains, and while they do that, A&M lines up. They'll snap it as soon as they put it in play. There goes the clock. McCown again, looks to the right side. He looks at Hodge, and this time overthrows him. That's exactly what I'm talking about. He made a great throw the play before, and he made a great throw a while ago that was dropped in the end zone, but that's a bad throw, just a little bit inconsistent. And this is not a difficult throw. You throw out routes like this all the time. That's a bad snap again. He barely caught that. But he's got a receiver open. He misses him by five yards. Hodge is 6'2", but he couldn't get out and get that one. 9 of 13, 94 yards. Pretty good numbers for Brandon McCown, and he has been fairly consistent today. One thing that hasn't worked for A&M is the running game, especially with Dante Hall. Wayne Goins comes in as an extra receiver now. Second down, they still need 10. Looking for Goins. Now he goes underneath to Johnson incomplete. You know, this reminds me of last week. Nebraska, we've said before, held 185 yards. And Jeff Bauer, testily after the game, said, hey, everybody's asking what's wrong with Nebraska's offense. It might just be our defense. Same thing here today. I'll tell you this. Even though Adelius Thomas did not get the sack, he is causing McNown to think about him. McCown has been thinking about him every time he rolls out. It's impossible to not think about it. And I'm telling you, McCown is making his best plays by catching the snaps. I mean, he ought to, we ought to give him some receiving yards here. He's getting bad snaps. This is not good for him. McKinney needs to do a better job. There's another bat. This time he has all day to throw. Goes deep. He's looking for Johnson. Overthrown. Boy, Bethel Johnson had about three steps on the defensive back. A&M knows that with the, with 
blitzing defense, you've got to hit the deep ball occasionally, and Bethel Johnson is the guy they're going to, but uh, the, the percentages are not in your favor on routes like that. You're, if you can hit one out of four, you've done, one out of five, you've done really well. You know, early in the season, in the first two games, the Maroon Machine averaging 50 points per game, 538 yards, and they only have six points here against Southern Miss today, and Leckler has to punt. Going for the corner. Actually shanks this one a little bit. They may mark this all the way up by the 33-yard line. That's an unimpressive series for the Aggies who have played pretty well. I mean, the snap there was poor. The shank punt. They didn't do much with that possession, and they really had trouble with exchanges the entire series. So it uh, was not very impressive, and they get good. Uh, Southern Miss gets good field position with 53 seconds. Dean, that was a 15-yard punt. That's not good. You know, you talk about national championship aspirations, and I think that this this club has enough ability to, to be talking about that. They've got to have better quarterback play in terms of making big plays. Jeff Bauer now with less than a minute. Does he just run the ball and run the clock out, or do you take some shots? Jeff Bauer led Southern Miss in total yardage for a reason. He likes to put it in the air and gamble a little bit. He's an offensive coach. He's going to throw. He's got to complete. And that's Gideon out to the 41-yard line. Well, Tim, you know you play defense. This is a time that if you're Texas A&M, even though they like the pressure, they've got to play softer. They're going to be playing some zone, and they'll be sitting back a little bit. So you can, you can pick up those easy routes. That's a good positive play there. Took off less than 10 seconds from the clock. It'll be second down and one. That doesn't mean a whole lot. It's not the down and distance now that means a whole lot for the Golden Eagles. It's the clock. Four wide receivers in the ballgame. Kelly has pressure. Going deep. He's looking for Pinkston. Intercepted. Webster with the pick. Picks up a block. And Webster brings it back to the 35-yard line. Well, Webster started 29 consecutive games, and there's a reason. He, he plays receiver on this play. So it's a perfect throw from the quarterback if he's trying to hit number 39. But this is great defense. Step for step, he accelerates and makes the catch like a wideout. That's his third interception of the year. He returned at 23 yards. He could be the all-conference cornerback here in the uh, Big 12. He is solid. So 33 seconds left now for the Aggies. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they go ahead and run that. No, sir. McCowan looks to the right. He's got it complete. It's a first down, and there's still time remaining. Chris Cole is all the way out to the 42-yard line, and there's going to be a timeout by the Aggies. 25 seconds still remain. Now, there's an example of more aggressive play calling from A&M. In years past, I think they would have been content to go ahead and just run the clock out. They have more confidence in McCown than, they ha than they've had in other passers here, and Craig Thorpe is a more aggressive guy. Well, coming into this ball game, and here again we'll put an exclamation point to your fine point, is the fact that the Aggies have thrown the ball 68 times in the first two games, and already today McCowan is 10 of 16. That's good. Gotta love these numbers for Texas A&M. They thrive on turnovers. In fact, they said they wanted four a game. So in 97, they're a plus 18. They had 18 more turnovers from their opposition than they gave up. Plus 16 last year, already plus four. So you add those up. What we have there, 10, 4, 8, 28? That's that Oklahoma no, no, math. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Let's see. That's Let's that do Oklahoma this. Math, Eight, folks. six. <laughs> he, was, he was a Sooner. <laughs> That's a lot of turnovers, folks. <laughs> I can't partner. spell potato either. 38. <laughs> First down A&M. Five-step drop, timing pattern going deep, and this one's almost intercepted. Raymond Walls had good coverage, and he was probably closest to the ball, and he's under. You know, this is a, a club that uh, comes in with its share of gadgetry. Uh, they've got a, a reverse that uh, they might pull out. Now, the only problem with pulling a reverse out now is that a team is suspecting something unusual with only 20 seconds left. They do have some weapons and some unusual plays. 
Second down and ten. They spread the field. Four wide receivers. McCowan looks left and rolls that way. Throws into the corner. It was intended for Goins. And there's a flag down. I don't know which way this one's going to go. The crowd's applauding as if it's naturally going their way. Well, Parrish and Goins were bumping and grinding pretty good. It's going to be against the Golden Eagles. 15 yards now. They're not going to take it down like it used to be down where the infraction occurred. All right, from the end zone, here we see a look at it. Boy, that is... Let's take another look and see if this is indeed as a duck comes down. I don't know that I make that call, Tim. I disagree with you. You, like, you think I definitely a... disagree with the call. Oh, disagree with the call. Yeah, I thought you said disagree with me. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Well, field goal range. First down and 10. 14 seconds remain. We'll see what McCallan does here. Again, there's time. Rolls left. Has plenty of field. There's a flag down in the backfield. And I believe this is going to be holding against the Aggies. Well, they had one more timeout still do. One more timeout remaining. Gives it a makeup call. I don't know, but it goes against AM and and knocks them back out of field goal position. Well, keep in mind now, Terrence Kitchen, Kitchen hit two 50-yarders last week. And also, I guess he has that win we talked about that was so help, helping the uh, punting so much. Get it up like that. Throw it up like that, like a Tiger Woods nine iron, and uh, he can get it through. He hits it like my nine iron, it'll only get about 12 feet off the ground, and it won't be high enough to get over. Well, we expected a defensive struggle here at Kyle Field today, and we certainly have had that in the first half. Southern Miss has been awfully strong defensively. AM has six points on the board. Southern Miss had an opportunity to get three, but missed the field goal. Timeout. Aggies. Well, if it's your last play of the half and they aren't going to kick it, Kitchens is on. Yeah, the other option is you can use the, the six seconds and try to get the ball in the end zone, get another call your way, or uh, try to get a big play. But Kitchens is a guy that, as you mentioned, RC is pretty high on it. Well, it's a terrific story. Terrence yeah. Kitchens is a walk-on. He's a guy that has struggled with his kicking at times, but has really, really been strong lately. As a matter of fact, has not missed this year. They gave him a scholarship on Thursday, and we asked R.C. Slocum yesterday about his kicker. I've really been impressed with, with uh, Terrence Kitchens. He's a youngster that has a made every kick we've asked of him this year. Uh, he's very uh, productive in practice, very consistent in practice. Uh, I would have no reservations about him kicking a 50-yard field goal and maybe even a little more than that uh, in a clutch situation. I, I think he'd, we'd have a good chance of making that kick. Well, this is more than that. It's 62 yards. Kitchens with the kick. He's got enough length from 62 yards. It's good. <laughs> Well, he needed the win that we showed you, and he had the confidence that the coach just told you about. What a performance. 62 yards, Terrence Kitchens with his third field goal of the afternoon. The wind at his back, a strong leg, and folks, he earned that scholarship that they gave him on Thursday to be able to get the snap whether you're under center or back and that's a bad snap here's another bad snap when you have to worry about where the ball is going to be your mind goes off of what it should be on you've got to be thinking about reading defenses what receivers are going to do you know in your progression not worried about can i catch this snap well southern miss will have it first the story of that first half had to be terrence kitchens Kitchens had a 20-yard field goal, a 28-yarder, and a 62-yarder. Terrence Kitchens' 62-yarder was the second longest in NCAA history without a tee. This kick goes out of the end zone for a touchback. Southern Miss will have it at the 20. Take a look at the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter 
first half statistics. We're talking Texas A&M defense. Look what they gave up to Southern Miss. Only two first downs, minus 12 rushing, only 36 passing. Total yards, 24. Third downs, nothing. And that, I got my math. I've been working on it at halftime. There were three field goals for A&M times three. Nine points, Tim. That's how you get to nine, right? Absolutely. Three, three. better with your man. Okay. Wasn't sure if that was three times three, six or nine. Talked about Terrence Kitchens. There he is, number 13, three field goals. He is the hero. His 62-yarder is still not a school record. Tony Franklin holds that. Southern miss on first down. Nothing. Ronald Flemons with a tackle. Well, Flemons and Bernard, the two defensive ends, are very, very similar. They're very athletic. They're a little bit undersized, although they've been growing the last year. They are very mobile, and they rush the passer really well. I don't know that they are at the level right now in the run game defense that they need to be at. Ron Edwards inside defensively is, though. But let's watch 99, Ronald Flemons. Quarterback never had a chance. Second down and 12 for Jeff Kelly. Southern Miss had only two first downs in the first half, and now there's a flag to whistle this one dead before it begins. That's a great indicator that it will be against the offense. Well, and if it is delay of game, which I would bet it would be, it's the defense causing that once again. It is. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, still second down. Both of these defenses do a great job of dis disguising coverages and mixing their fronts. And what that does is it makes the quarterback look around and, and adjust and audible, and that, that eats up a lot of time. It requires that the offensive coordinator get the play into the huddle much quicker. Wrecking crew from AM has eight starters back on that defense in last year's title team. They're the strongest front seven in the Big 12. The Aggies use speed and discipline to stop the run, and they've done it effectively this afternoon. Second down and long. Pressure. Kelly almost picked off. Oh, my. Edwards had it in his hands and could not hold on. I think he started reading the headlines and lost the football. <laughs> well, Jason Glenn makes the play there, but that was their dime coverage. They have six defensive backs. And watch Glenn, 23. Just got by him like it's nothing. The guy has great athleticism and mobility. So they have six guys back in coverage, yet get that kind of pressure on the quarterback. Not a great start in the second half for Southern Miss. Third down and 17. They fake the blitz. Cross the middle, incomplete. It looked like Pinkston got alligator arms, actually pulled them back. But the defense with an outstanding job to start the second half. Yeah, you're right, Tim. But I tell you what, this play had a chance to go somewhere. You've got them bunched up over here. And watch Pinkston will come down on a crossing route, stop it right there. Now, if that ball is completed and thrown perfectly, and it's it's tougher said, it's tougher done than said, that he has a lot of room to get downfield. Actually, he did make an effort for it. Jamie Purser is on the punt. He was extended. My bad. This is a high punt. Webster, Hall, to the 49. So it was a 38-yard punt, a return of three, and Texas A&M will have outstanding field position in their first offensive series. Here's the Dell Game Solutions that we talked about earlier, Dean. How they doing? Well, the A&M offense making big plays. They didn't make very many big plays, and protecting the quarterback, I don't know. I think the, really what the game solutions that worked more effectively were the defensive keys, and they did a great job of accomplishing what Mike Hankwitz wanted to do. So now Randy McCowan goes to work for the Aggies. Straight ahead they go. Toons down to the 42-yard line. Boy, he is a load. Six feet, 265 pounds. They love him here out of Kilgore, Texas. He's just a sophomore. Picks up nine. It'll make second down and one for the Aggies. You know, R.C. brought up the point in our meeting that just trying for the big plays, extending the defenses, maybe is as important as making the big plays and making them respect you. 
surprise to me is Dante Hall, 10 carries, only five oh, yards in the first half. Here he is. He's got some room here. Hall down inside the 30. He's got the first down still on his feet. Well, his feet move so fast. Looks like he's tap dancing on the light bulb. He's as good as I've seen with that. I don't always want to compare everyone to Barry Sanders because he's incomparable. But, but watch what he does with his football. Yeah, he's held to five yards so far. Watch the feet. Boop, 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 boop. Barely gets touched right there. And he does something with it. You know, a lot of guys move their feet very quickly, but they don't do anything with it. They don't make any forward progress. He goes forward. That eight-yard pickup is his longest of the day. First down for AM. McCowan looking deep. He's got Taylor. Broken up at the last second. Terrence Parrish got a hand on it to knock away what looked to be a sure touchdown to CT. Well, McCown is a very popular player, but he'll become more, much more popular if he can throw balls like this better. He's got the wind behind him, and he's got a receiver behind the secondary by two or three yards. And you see a show of frustration from the receiver there because he knew he had something. Taylor thought he had it. It's a nice defensive play, but it's a poorly thrown ball. Second down, the Aggies need 10. Here's Hall. Looking for some room outside. Won't get a gain of two. Man, they are all over him. Adelius Thomas again makes the tackle. So Thomas and Slaughter have just been relentless this afternoon for the Golden Eagles. You know, Thomas has. He's disrupted a lot of things, but in terms of, of total tackles, they've negated him for the most part. He only had one unassisted tackle in the first half. So our two stars have been pretty much negated. But he is a load. You have to double him a lot. You have to always know where he is. He's an All-American, Conference USA's Player of the Year. 20 C at seven career sacks for Thomas. Third down, need about nine. Taylor, did he have a foot in? No, out of bounds, incomplete. So once again, we'll see the hero of the game thus far. That's Terrence Kitchens, I believe. Well, there's Jeff Bauer, and he would love to keep Texas A&M third quarter because you've got to remember that wind is blowing at 15 miles an hour. You saw the field go there late, and it's a big factor in the passing game. So if he could keep this deficit or at least keep Texas A&M to nine points, he'd feel, good better, he'd feel better going into the fourth. That's a pretty good afternoon right there. This one will be from <laughs> 47. He has not missed this year. Bad snap again. The ball's on the ground, and Kitchens tries to throw it away. That's not a very smart play, and that'll be a penalty. You don't see the kicker with intentional grounding very often, but that's not a very good play. They've had this problem all day. All day. Chance Pierce is the true freshman snapper, and he's a walk-on. And that ball probably could have been caught. But still, you're right. They have been they have been struggling with the snapping all day long. And I'll remind you that the player here before, Kyle Lednick, had gone four years without any bad snaps. They'd always gotten the punts off. Intentional grounding against the offense. It'll be a loss of down at the spot. First down for Southern Miss. Last time I saw that intentional grounding by a kicker, I think it was Garrow Upremian <laughs> in Super Bowl eight, I believe it was, against the Redskins. That was an all-timer, wasn't it? 11.39 to play. And so that'll be a first down for Southern Miss. And Kelly put that one right where only his guy could get it. He hasn't been inaccurate today. They just haven't been able to move the chains. It's just great defense. I mean, you, you line up with the cornerbacks that A&M puts out there, and Webster and Curry, it makes it tough because that allows them to blitz like crazy. I've been surprised, though, that Cable Davis hasn't gotten any snaps. So Pinkston now goes to the top of the screen. And again, they run the ball with Knicks. Didn't you get the feel that uh, Cable Davis uh, might come in a little earlier? Or might come in, I should say. He hasn't been in the game yet. You know, he was the starter until two days before the season began. I understand that. And Cable Davis has a big-time gun. As you mentioned, he was the starter in the spring and the fall. He's 5 of 13 this year. 
He's not mobile, Tim, and I think that might be a concern when you have a defense that's in the backfield all day long. Second down and seven. Kelly on a three-step drop, trying to throw on schedule, and just throws this one away. It was intended for Sherrod Gideon. Well, benefit of the doubt, it is into a big win, but uh, that ball, Will Chamberlain couldn't have gotten that on a trampoline. Ought six, huh? Not can't, very strong. Yeah, can't win games with zero for six on third down conversions. We'll see what happens here on third down and seven. Kelly needs time, and then he's got to throw off that back foot. He hasn't been doing it. Incomplete. Gideon made the catch, but he did not get any feet down. Boy, again, there was great coverage by Jason Webster. Webster's the best. Remember, he is a terrific cover corner. And he was going up against Gideon, who is an NFL receiver. You'll see it down here on the bottom. Now, if you're the quarterback, you're getting the pressure. The one thing you have to do, keep the ball in bounds. Give your man a ch chance to make the play. Almost, Tim, but he didn't give him the chance. It was only a few, few inches, but both of those balls that he threw were out of bounds. So Jamie Purser will punt away. Gets a high spiraling punt. This will hit inside the five and get a Southern Miss bounce. A&M is going to be backed up inside the five-yard line after a 43-yard punt by Purser. 10-15 to play third quarter. Still stuck at nine. Third quarter, Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins with you. Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. The Aggies lead 9-0 over Southern Miss. A defensive battle. But it's been fun, partner. This is a good ball game. We felt it would be a defensive struggle. It has been that, but you never know when a score is this low. One or two big plays can mean the difference in the game, and Southern Miss could easily come back and win this thing. Right now, the fans thinking about that 96-yard touchdown pass from McCown to Taylor. Like they had earlier this year. Straight ahead they go. Big hole. Toombs out across the 15. Toombs still on his feet. Jamar Toombs all the way out across the 20-yard line. A gain of 17. How about that? Well, folks, it has been a defensive struggle. So far, all the scoring has come from Terrence Kitchens, the Texas A&M kicker. A 20-yard field goal, 28, and a 62-yarder just before the half. By the way, that 62-yarder is the second longest in NCAA history without a tee. Tim Brant and Dean Blevins with you. A glorious day in Texas, 84 degrees, light breeze. And it has been a defensive struggle. You know, the first thing that Southern Miss wanted to do defensively was stop Dante Hall. And I said it was impossible to stop him, but it hasn't been. They have done a terrific job. There you see Scott. That's Cedric Scott. They line up Derek Scott, Cedric Scott, DeQuincy Scott. But this one's probably the best. This guy has a chance to be a high draft choice in the NFL at defensive end. Keep in mind, this defense held Nebraska to just 185 total yards last week. Nebraska's offense went three plays and out 11 times in 14 possessions. Second down and long for AM. McCown throws, has it complete. And Taylor goes out of bounds. Knocked out there by Terrence Parrish. Crowd doesn't like the mark. And they were right, so they moved the football. Still good defense there by Terrence Parrish, the best cover corner guy that they have. Southern Miss has got someone back there that can play it as well. He had him a big interception last week against Nebraska in the end zone. Let's see if this mark is right as you see Parrish here lined up defensively. Forward progress. Uh, I think they actually gave him a half yard. What do you think, partner? Well, they moved it up and they did give him a half yard. Originally, the mark was incorrect, however. Third down and call it five. McCown's got backside pressure and he'll be sacked. That is four sacks today. Cedric Scott will get credit for this one. And Southern Miss has 11 sacks on the year. Well, they come with another blitz. 
and they didn't need to blitz actually for Cedric Scott to beat his man coming off the edge. He just flat out beats his man one-on-one, -on -one, and Andy Vinson, who's a good blocker, is beaten by Cedric Scott. So Southern Miss will get outstanding field position here. Almost blocked. This is a high kick. And Mills has absolutely nowhere to run. So take back what I said. They won't have great field position. A 64-yard punt, great coverage, and the ball is marked at the 14-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you. The new quarterback for Southern Mississippi comes into the ball game now. We'll see if he can generate some kind of offense for the Golden Eagles. They give it to Nix. He's got a hole across the 20, 25, out to the 30. Finally taken down up near the 35-yard line. So the biggest run of the day for Derek Nix, the tailback. Derek Nix, the baby bull. He's a big, strong runner, and watch him bolt up in here. You know, you get teams that pursue a lot or trying to swarm to the football. Cutting back against the grain is something that's very effective. This guy's a big, strong, tough runner. You don't expect him to have long runs like that. He was a freshman All-American, 100 yards in two of the three games. He had 70 against Nebraska. That was a gain of 19. This ball is thrown behind Pinkston. So Cable Davis now on his first pass incomplete. Big guy out of Sacramento. He's only thrown 13 passes. That's the makes number 14. So only 62 yards at Southern Miss. So it's going to take him a while to get in his rhythm. Out of those 14 passes, he's only completed five. His brother John played quarterback at Wyoming. But as you mentioned, Dean, he is. He's big and he's strong. And there's a look at Jeff Kelly who leaves six or rather eight of 16 for 47 yards, but they were not able to move the football effectively. Picked off. Brooks, touchdown Texas A&M. Jay Brooks with the interception, and Cable Davis gets a big play, but it's in the opposite direction. That's the risk you run putting in a quarterback who's not played anything anytime against a great defense. Cable Davis just throws a bad pass. Here we have the isolation as Jay Brooks makes a break on the ball, but he really didn't have to break very much. That was a, a poorly thrown ball, and the way that Texas A&M is playing defense, this score must seem 40 to nothing instead of 15 to nothing. Jay Brooks' first interception. He returns it 41 yards for the touchdown. Kitchen splits the sticks with the extra point. And just like that, it's Texas A&M 16, Southern Miss. Nothing Texas A&M after the interception by Jay Brooks. He returned at 41 yards for the touchdown. And you see the dejected Cable Davis, who just came into the ball game. There's a look at Brooks, who had the interception, his first interception of the year. They'll down this one five yards deep and bring it out to the 20. Take another look, Dean. See if you can see what happened on the pick. A&M is in zone defense. It's a mystery. Stop it right there. He thinks the receiver, Gideon, is going to be running inside. Gideon, because the man is here, is going this way. So miscommunication totally between the new quarterback and the wide receiver. And I think it was the quarterback's mistake and not the receiver on an option route. Now, that mistake, is that because of the, the lack of reps since he doesn't get that many reps? Reps in practice? Well, I would think so, and, and, and lack of reps in the game, too. It's one thing to do it on the practice field. It's another to do it with a crowd like this and maroon all around. Davis still in the ball game, And they bang it straight ahead for a couple of tough ones. So they go back with Davis. They say, we've, we've committed. We're going to see if you can be the guy. You saw it was... A rusty handoff there. Just the, the whole chemistry, the timing changes. Think about Jeff Bauer's call to go with this. Well, right now it doesn't look good, but, but I, I thought that he probably would at least give them a chance with a better hose, better arm than Jeff Kelly. So uh, we'll see what he does from here on out, but I don't think it's a bad decision. Second down, Southern Miss. Next left side across the 25 to the 27. 
Reminder coming up Sunday night on ESPN Sports. And the Patriots have won both of their games in the last minute, so that one should be exciting. Third down and three for Southern Miss. Three-step drop pressure, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Jason Glenn, who's just played a terrific ball game. Jason Glenn is an athlete who will continue to get better and better. There you see 23 right there. Hands up. Offensive lineman has to attack him a little bit more so that he can't get his hands up like that. Glenn, who had three sacks last week, continues to be on a tear. We told you he's a converted safety. He is extremely mobile, and he's six foot two with great wingspan, so he's tough to throw over. Jamie Purser has a low snap that gets off a high punt. This is a tail wagger that will take Dante Hall all the way back to the 22. Shakes the tackler. And gets out to the 27-yard line. So it was a 52-yard punt and a five-yard return by Dante Hall. Tim, I'm sure you've been a part of teams and, and called a lot of games where you see a team that's struggling on offense so much or defense is dominating so much you think that they could play for a week and not score on it. I get the feeling that that's what this guy feels like right now. We could play for a long time and we might not score. So with 5.41 to play in the third, it's 16-0 A&M. We'll see if the Aggies can add to that lead. Here he is again. They love him here. Jamar Toons. Look at Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. And Dean, he could be the MVP today. Well, he could. He has a great game plan going, and he has some great players to do it with. He is a, a guy that uh, was at Minnesota for a year, two years before that at Kansas. Spent a lot of time up at Colorado from 88 to 94, and a very well-respected defensive guru. Toombs now 54 yards on 10 carries, so it hasn't been Hall today. It's been Toombs, the bigger back. Here's Hall. And he's had a tough goal. You mentioned Colorado. Mike Hankowitz was there. Colorado today playing Washington. The, the game has gotten a lot of publicity. Let's find out what's happening. Let's go to New York. Here's John. Well, team. First down, Texas A&M. Well, at the conclusion of today's game, we will select a Chevrolet player of the game for each team. In recognition of these athletes, Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also make a donation to each player's high school. That's coming up at the conclusion of today's game. 4.50 to play in the third quarter. 16-0 Texas A&M in what has been definitely a defensive struggle. McCowan. Throws deep, looking for Bethel Johnson, incomplete. Correction, that's Chris Taylor. Well, Taylor's got some speed, too, doesn't he? He's a yeah. former quarterback. He really does. And, uh, you know, the pass he caught last week in stride that you talked about earlier was a thing of beauty that uh, was a wonderful throw and catch from deep in their own territory. you got to wonder. You see the defense there now. They're a little beleaguered, and they played so well, but their offense isn't giving them any help. This is a time that's really a gut check. Had a look at Terrence Parrish, who's out of the game. He's a starting cornerback, and without him, they're not as strong in the corner. Here's Toombs again, out to the 45-yard line. Southern Miss had some problems in the middle of the defense last week against Nebraska. And sometimes they get their linebackers out deep, but that's just a terrific block. Chris Valletta. By the way, this is an articulate guy who is, uh, has his own radio show. I think he's looking for our job. Oh, Chris Valletta, the big guy up front, 71. Terrence Parrish comes back into the ball game. You saw him a moment ago injured on the sideline, but he's back in now. He is, in fact, their best cover guy for Southern Miss. Third down. McCowan goes. This is Johnson and incomplete. Boy, Johnson almost did have it. Dangerous pass. Raymond Walls finally knocked it away. So fourth down and four now. Texas A&M leader for most career punts. Well, the Appleby's game fact, it's David Appleby. <laughs> 
Not exactly spelled the same, but that's pretty strong. Shane Leckler with a kick. Bill standing back at the 10. He's telling his guys to get away. And it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Boy, he's had a good day. Boy, we've seen some punts. That one is 56 yards and goes into the end zone. So Leckler's punt is for a touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20. And what I like about it is he didn't boom it all the way through the end zone. He had a chance to stop that ball with inside the, inside the five-yard line. You know, Leckler's a guy who averages 44 yards a kick. But more importantly to me, or more impressively, is he has a 40-yard net average. That's really important. That's the key number. And last year it was 44. He's got a strong leg. You're right. Southern Miss needs some offense. It has been lacking all afternoon. Davis throws. It's complete. And Gideon is tagged up by the first down marker. It will be enough for the first. What Jason a, Webster really tattooed him. Wow, what a reception on this. Let's take a look as Michael Jamison is going to be all over Gideon. This ball's rifled in there. Watch the catch. Outstanding. And that's why he is a guy that is projected to be the fourth. That's why he's the guy projected to be the fourth receiver in the draft. Actually, that was Webster on him, wasn't it? Webster made him pay the price. He now has six catches, does Gideon, and he needs really to get a big one. First down, Golden Eagles. They come with a blitz. Davis throws off his back foot incomplete. It was intended for Fowler. Went right through his hands. Didn't look like uh, he really set. Watch number 70 here, Blackman. On a, on a blitz pickup, the tackle as you get a blitz right in here. 70 does a great job of holding his man, but you got to hit this guy. That's an easy throw there, Tim. It was well defended, though. He catches it. He's hammered. Well, it brings up second down and 10 for the Golden Eagles. A&M just comes with a three-man rush, and they still get pressure, and they get the sack. One of the few times they didn't come with a blitz. They just came with a three-man rush, and Bradley gets the sack. Well, you nailed it. Three-man rush, you're supposed to have all day to throw. The, the difficulty is supposed to be trying to find a receiver, but Bradley is a terrific rush man. Cable's trying to find someone, but he has heat all over him. And Well, you talk about the wrecking crew. They've been all of that and then some this afternoon. So now it's third down and 15, and it seems like... The Southern Miss offense has been facing that type of situation all day. They're trying to run in cement. 0 for 8 on third down conversion. Backside pressure, and Glenn gets the sack again. Jason Glenn. Well, that was a great defensive play, but it was also a poor job on the offense by the strong tackle, Brian Bell. He didn't come close to keeping Glenn out of the backfield. A&M has just taken this game over. Think they like to blitz any down here? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Aggies are doing it all with defense. Five sacks already. Got to be thinking now. This will be against uh, the Golden Eagles. This will be a penalty against Southern Miss again. Five sacks, two interceptions. Proud of the snap. False start on the offense. Still fourth down. Dean, if the fifth rank Aggies are going to make a charge at the national title and their schedule sure, sure is conducive for that, they're going to have to get some more offense. Well, they are, and I think that uh, Jeff Bauer is shaking his head there, Tim, but I think the one thing they've got to do is be more efficient in the passing game. They've got to have big plays. I, I think it rests on the shoulders of Randy McCown. And he'll be coming here, a person standing in his own end zone. Laycock down to four again. This is a high spiraling punt. Dante Hall is all the way back to the 40. Gets a block. Hall still on his feet in Southern Miss territory. So a 49-yard punt and a return by Hall of 14 yards. Hey, another reminder, college football.
Cowan, plenty of time, almost picked off. They get the completion, it's good for the first and all, was that a dangerous pass? But a good catch by Chris Cole. I was surprised that they didn't check out of that because Southern Miss was in a nickel coverage and they went ahead and let the route stand up and terrific throw and catch. Cole's third catch of the afternoon, he now has five on the year. That's a play, though. You being a def defensive guy, you know that if you break a half second sooner, that's seven points. Well, I'm assuming it makes extra point. I thought he had the pick. I was reading it with him. First down, they throw this one away. It was intended for Taylor. Good coverage by Ty Trahan, the uh, linebacker. Well, some people may say, well, he was throwing that away. Uh-uh. It was good coverage, but but that that is the question. You say, can they win the national championship? This guy is gutty. I mean, he has guts. He has leadership. The players believe in him. He has take charge ability in the huddle. But you've got to come through throwing the football in today's era to win national championships. He's 12 of 24 for 134. And as we said off the top, he tends to be inconsistent. So to bring up second down and 10. We'll see what he does here. Cowan's got pressure, throws off the back foot, another dangerous pass, incomplete. But Darian Brutley almost had the interception again. Well, we talked about that Colorado-Washington game. Let's go back to New York and get an update, John. Last week, Ben Kelly having one whale of the year. Colorado's pretty solid. Third down and 10, McCowan again, steps up into the pocket and throws this one away, and he was open this time. Chris Cole's defender was at least five yards behind him. Well, not a good series for Randy, the, the quarterback. On the last play, he forced the ball into double coverage. Should have been intercepted. He had a man open on the far side from where he was, and uh, not a good series. We've talked about Southern Miss and being inept on third down conversions. Texas A&M is just three for 15. Here comes Terrence Kitchens again. Kitchens will be kicking this one from 54 yards. He's already made three today, as long as the 62-yarder. This one's blocked. This one's blocked by Southern Miss. And it looked like it was Adelius Thomas that blocked it. Well, they need something to jumpstart him, and there is Adelius. He did it. Buster, that's a poor job up front. I mean, he, I mean, he is an explosive guy. He is big and strong, but uh, you've, you've got to... You've got to hold him out a little bit better than that. Big, strong, and mobile. Keep in mind, Thomas is six foot four, has that big wingspan, and when he comes in front of you, that's hard to kick over. He's 262 with the body fat of a goalpost. So Southern Miss has some new life. They're down two touchdowns and two two-point conversions as we near the end of the third quarter. Cable Davis rolls right and now tucks it away and runs with it. To the 47 yard line. So, can that jump start uh, an offense that is really struggling? I mean, this is a critical series for Southern Miss if they expect to come back and have a chance, or come back and win this game because this is now they now they get the win with good field position. So, that's the end of the third quarter. Texas A&M 16, Southern Miss nothing. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Stadium. Look at this, how Texas A&M wears you down at the end of the first half, and they wear you down at the end of the game. They just continue to pound on you, Dean. They're very physical, and their second teamers are much better than the opposing team. Second down and long, absolutely nothing there. As a matter of fact, the ball hit the ground, so the fumble, and Southern Miss will lose yardage. Again, Cable Davis is the one to put it on the ground. Ought, 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 so you can't play any better than that. How many points can they put in that block right there? You know what, the, the, the changing quarterback, he's got to be wondering. Jeff Bauer's going, gosh, my guy's fumbling it. And he goes, do we go back to my starter, Kelly? It's been an inauspicious start for Cable Davis today. If Davis doesn't move him on this series, if he doesn't get the first down here on third and seven, I think they go back. Going deep. Has a receiver. It looks like Pinkston. Pinkston's in for the touchdown. And he's your hand. And Todd Pinkston for the touchdown. Cable Davis does come through. A 54-yard touchdown. And you've got to believe now they'll go for two. 
and that's exactly why they put Cable Davis in. Here we see Pinkston. Just a fly pattern. Has his man beaten Jay Brooks by two steps. And the throw, you mentioned it right before. He's got to come through with the big play. That's why he's in right there. He has that capability. A perfect strike from Cable Davis. And all of a sudden, Southern Miss is back in it. And the crowd here at Aggieland starting to come back to life, knowing their team needs some help. If they make this two, they're only eight down. Touchdown and two would send it to overtime, perhaps. Davis with time. Throws to the corner. Incomplete. Whoa. Gideon wanted pass interference. There are no flags. Oh, that's close. Woo. AM 16, Southern Miss 6, 14 14 left. Texas AM has just been scored on by Southern Miss, but the two point conversion was no good. And Jeff Bauer still shaking his head, still upset about the call or the no call. It looked to me like it was blatant pass interference, but there were no flags. Well, I thought it was as the play ran, and on a replay during the break, I think that uh, that only verified it, and Jeff Bauer is hot. He has been hot most of the afternoon, but that's a critical call. Well, we'll show that replay, and we'll let you, the viewer, determine whether it was pass interference right after the kickoff. Dante Hall chases this one to the back of the end zone. It goes through for the touchback. And Let's take another look at the two-point play. And it's a great matchup because it's Gideon, the terrific receiver, and the cornerback is Jason Webster. Into the end zone, a little stop route, and you've got to determine, is the ball catchable? Stop it right there. There's contact right there, and the ball was catchable. I thought that was the only question. So much contact that the defensive back from one yard deep in the end zone all the way across the goal line. Jeff, what do you think of that? I see. And guy, the, it's so critical because they would have been eight down and could tie it perhaps with a touchdown and two. So now the defense has to rise to the occasion. They bang it straight ahead. Absolutely nothing there. Michigan, Wisconsin, let's get an update. Let's go back to New York. Hey, John. Here in Kyle Field, it's 16 to six, Texas A&M. The Aggies with the football. 13-33 to play. Here's Toons. Oh, is he strong? Has the first down. Still on his feet to the 40-yard line, and they love him here in Aggieland. A gain of 17. AM has found a soft spot, and they're taking advantage of it here. That's a sign of great coaching. You have to have the players to execute, but that's why coaches get paid. They find out what, what might work. That, that rush was 17. Good blocking up front by all the interior linemen. Seth McKinney doing a particularly good job, and Hamuli is a terrific player. I don't know, that looked like a takedown to me. Joe Weber's in the ball game now, replacing Dante Hall, and Weber picks up a couple of tough yards. Just about six. Well, this Weber, number 28, has a chance to be a special back. I mean, he is a true freshman that was the number one running back on the West Coast. He's a big one. I mean, he's got the size, and he's a player that everyone in the country wanted. Here's McCowan. They need four. So they go to Toons, and Toons can't get anything this time. There's a flag. I'll tell you this. Jamar Toons, if it's a hammer-chisel situation, Dante is the... The chisel and Toombs is the hammer. 12 carries for 77 yards. Yeah, I've been very impressed with him and keep in mind Tiki Hardeman out of the game today, but it's pretty good. You're pretty deep when you nice come pass. in. On the defense, five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Pretty good when you can come in with a backup like Toombs. Well, tomorrow the winner of four Emmys, including best drama two years. So it's a first down, 12-20 now. Time becomes a factor for Southern Miss. And, of course, the Aggies just want to melt that clock. Here we go, off the right side. And Weber again picks up a few. Injury up front to alignment of Looks Texas like A&M. I think it's Holder. Texas A&M, number 79, 
12 04 to play. Timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. We'll be back after this. Quarterbacks here. One, two, three backup guys, and they play a significant role in this game of sending plays in. Only one of them will be a live play that, that's sent in, and two of them are dummies, as they call them. <laughs> Don't want to call the kids dummies, but it's a dummy signal. So it, uh, it's a sophisticated way of sending plays in these days. We'll see if the signal worked, if the play got through. Second down and 11, McCowan's in trouble. Now he throws over the top, and it's dropped by Taylor. Taylor had lost his defender and then dropped the pass. Good pressure by the Golden Eagles that time, and Thomas was the one applying the pressure. Here you see A.D. coming off the edge on the right side. There he is. This guy we've been talking about all day. Persistent. Look at the agility of him. And this is actually a very good throw by McCown, one of the best of the day. Should have been caught, Tim. He's going to be fun to watch not only the rest of his college career, but certainly at the next level. He'll be playing on Sundays. Third down and 11. They double team Thomas this time. McCowan throws a bounce pass, and there's a flag down on the play. And this could be holding against Thomas. They're doing everything they can to keep him out. They've chop blocked him, they've held him, and this time they get a flag. I get the sense that Southern Miss is going to have a chance to come back and win this. They're going to have to show some more offense. Here's Hal Dowden. Here's the illegal block. And this is on Adelius Thomas. They had to chop him to keep him from the quarterback. Here's Adelius again. And Tim, they, you're right. They did call it right there. Chop block. Can't do that. He doesn't stay down very long, though. He gets up and, and he knows it happened. Hey, ref. Chop. Can't do that. So with 11.35 to play, Southern Miss holds. They'll get the ball back. Shane Leckler has really had some good punts this afternoon. Those two incompletions, of course, stopping the clock, and which gives the Golden Eagles more, more time, more chances. Sean Mills standing at his own 10. He'll fair catch this one and let it hit. And the Aggies will down it inside the five. play by Jason Webster to down and inside the five. Sixteen to six, Texas A&M. Southern Miss backed up, and the Golden Eagles have to go over just over 97 yards for the score here. Davis picked off. Curry with the pick. sure if there's not confusion again if, if, if there isn't it's just a very poorly thrown ball hitch and go there is confusion once again and, and once again when you have a new quarterback that's going to happen but uh, the quarterback obviously thought Pinkston was not going to do the hitch and go Pinkston thought he had a step on his man well he's led the Aggies in interceptions the last two years he gets the big interception here and this can be a game turner the Aggies can put them away. Here's Toons, big hole. Down to the 13-yard line. And with just over 11 minutes to play and a 10-point lead, that interception could be devastating for Southern Miss. The Southern Miss offense has not given the defense a chance to win this game. Third Boy, interception, and yeah, you know that uh, they wanted to turn, have four turnovers in this game, and I think they are there. Wrecking crew has once again earned that name. Hall breaks a tackle inside the 10 to the 9. Dante Hall. Oh, man, he's fun to watch. He can bounce outside with the best of them. That play is designed where he can take it inside or, or jump outside. Watch him here from the end zone. You'll have a good look at Dante Hall. Now watch the feet of Dante Hall. He can take this ball inside of it's there. Nope, got to pop outside. That's a special running back right there. Thomas 
again on the tackle. Daly is having a fine second half. Hall had two touchdowns against Southern Miss last year. He has yet to find the end zone this afternoon. The option for Cowan. Never did pitch it. Got a bad read, false read, and T.J. Slaughter makes the stop. Well, this guy has had one heck of a game. T.J. Slaughter now has 17 tackles. He has six for loss. That was a big one right there because now it prevents the touchdown. Kitchens comes back on for another attempt. He's got three field goals today. He's had one blocked. This is a 27-yarder for Kitchens. Good snap, good hold, and this one's blocked. So the Southern Miss defense holds. 9.23 to play. This one's not over yet. There's still a 10-point differential. Texas A&M leading by 10, but Southern Miss has just blocked Kitchen's field goal attempt. That's the last two attempts have been blocked. And there is the starter, Jeff Kelly, who has been pulled from the game. And Dean, there is no worse feeling, deserved or not, there's a tremendous feeling of inadequacy when you get pulled from a ball game. Tell me about it, partner. Cable Davis, the quarterback. He's thrown a couple of interceptions. He's being chased down from behind here. Hey, Tennessee's trying to rebound from that loss last week to Florida. Big happenings in Knoxville. Let's go back to New York. Here's John. We'll keep an eye on that one for you in Knoxville. Meanwhile, here, 839 remaining in the ballgame. Southern Davis, and it's picked off again. Michael Jamison with the interception, the touchdown, and that could do it. Davis, his third interception of the afternoon, and that one is terribly costly. The inexperience of Davis has caught them. Has cost them right, right there. Let's take a look. Jamison sitting in zone. He was laying low, and that's exactly what a DB dreams of. Oh, when Jeff Kelly left this ball game, it was only 6-0 in a defensive battle. Three Davis interceptions now have turned this around. A&M's wrecking crew has really capitalized. And there'll be a lot of questions in Hattiesburg about the change in quarterback. And in my opinion, clearly the reason is that Cable Davis, the coaches believe, gives them a chance to make the big plays. You know, if you take away that 54-yard touchdown pass in the second half, Southern Miss has a total of 39 yards. You add that with the first half total, that's only 63 yards total. That's unbelievable that that's, that's all they have. Give credit, though, to the defense. I agree with you, and there is no question, partner, they will be second-guessing Jeff Bauer's decision to go with Cable Davis. I understand the big-time gun, but with Jeff Kelly, you've got a guy who really doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's inconsistent. Well, I take that back. Six turnovers against Nebraska last week, including the two return for touchdowns. So both of them had them. But it was a 6-0 ball game when Kelly left. Well, Conference USA is, a, is an up-and-coming conference. But when you go play Nebraska and then you go play Texas A&M, you've got to take it up a notch. And for him to just now be getting his ears wet with that type of competition, and of course he didn't even play last week, that's asking a lot of a young guy. Doubting the capability of Southern Miss to even score against a &M. Any more points this afternoon. We'll see. Eight twenty-two to play. Well, ABC Sports presentation of comes with you in Aggieland, Kyle Field, in College Station, Texas. Eight twenty-two to play. Texas A&M twenty-three, Southern Miss six. And a lot of the points have come from the defense. Matter of fact, all of them have come from defense and special teams. And Cable Davis remains in the game. Here's Nix with a big hole, first down out to midfield. So Derek Nix gets a big gainer, picks up 16. Football is a numbers game. Nickel and dime defensive schemes from nickel and dime schemes from Texas A&M. So. Jeff Bauer decides to run it up the gut, and that's why you saw the big yardage there. Jeff Bauer now in his ninth full season in Southern Miss. He's 46. He's won two conference titles, gone to two straight bowls, and certainly he's a quality coach. He's got things going at Southern Miss. They're for real, but a little bit outmatched here this afternoon. Here's Nix. 
Inside the 50 to the 47. Dean, what do you think about the Big 12? How do they formulate things? How, how does the, in your opinion, the rankings? Well, I would put it this way. I would have Texas A&M at the top. Uh, Nebraska, I would have second. They're, they're temporarily kind of bewildered. Kansas State beat Iowa State today. I have Texas four, Colorado five, Missouri six. That would be my first six. And here would be the next, next six. Oklahoma, I think, leading now over Louisville. Oklahoma State, Iowa State, Tech, Kansas, Baylor. Baylor really struggling. I think the team on the rise is Colorado. Regardless of the outcome in Washington. Davis has his hand locked, and again, it's almost picked off and probably should have been. Wow. Bradley certainly had it, and it went right through him. And he would now be celebrating in the end zone right now because he would have definitely gone all the way. As Roy Lynn Bradley, 40, gets a tipped ball. That's not the quarterback's fault. Although you have to look for windows to throw to. Wasn't tipped. I guess he got hit from behind, so still not the quarterback's fault. But Bradley had a chance to uh, take it the distance, and that is exactly why they're called the wrecking crew. Simon got him, hit his arm. Bradley should have had the interception. Third down, and Davis falls, got his feet tangled, coming away from the line. Well, that happens more often than, than you think to quarterbacks. Well, uh, again, I, I'm saying that he probably doesn't take a lot of snaps from the guys working with right now. Well, Zeb Landers, Landers, yeah. Zeb Landers was backing up. He was uh, looking for the fold to help out the guard, and certainly when his feet came back, Zeb wasn't out of there yet. Jeff Kelly not feeling very good right now. It's one thing to be taken out. It's another to watch the guy who goes in struggle as much as Cable Davis is struggling. So Purser comes back to punt it away. Dante Hall and Jason Webster are deep for AM. High punt. And Dante Hall fair catches it at the 13. Well, college football coming up on ESPN. Pretty you know, I, I really like that Florida club though. Sounds like the moose call here in Texas for Daryl Johnston. Of course, he's out with the Cowboys, but it's the Toons call. Oh, I like him, Dean. Yeah, I've been really impressed with it. Just Great over six feet, 265 pounds. That is a load. He's got 85 yards this afternoon, and they have all been tough yards. Anytime it comes down to Florida State and Texas A&M when you're trying to decide where to go to school, that means you're a really good player. Second down and six. Hall. And Hall's out to the 19-yard line. Not enough for the first. T.J. Slaughter with another tackle. And what an afternoon for T.J. Slaughter. Yes. Slaughter, the leading tackler last year. He's from Birmingham, Alabama. Definitely the nucleus of this defense. And I mean, folks, he will blow you up. He has 20 tackles this afternoon. That's a busy day. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at that. In the middle, you have more opportunities, but that is amazing regardless where you are. Tunes again. He'll be close. I think he got it. It takes three guys to get him down. And they got the first. You know, a lot of stories that we learned this week while we were down here, and certainly one that's been taking place over the last six or seven months, is on that Texas A&M coaching staff. Well, it's just a satisfying door, a, a coach, a quarterback coach here. This is him during warm-ups earlier today. He was diagnosed in spring with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and that is a, a tough, tough battle he's waging. He is loved by his coaches, his players. He says, I want to continue coaching because that's what I love. He's up in the booth right now. Our prayers certainly are with him. You know, and R.C. Slocum brought up a good point yesterday. He says, you know, it's the ultimate test. It shows our players that we're going to back up what we tell you. We always tell you to hang in there and fight and, and 
you know, to, to battle. Be it, positive. Yeah, and yeah, that's the one thing he did talk about too. What an ultimate test. Approaching the four minute mark. Texas A&M 23, Southern Miss 6. Certainly has been all that we thought defensively. The defense for the wrecking crew has just been incredible this afternoon. <laughs> McCallan rolls all the way to the right and has it incomplete. It was intended for Leroy Hodge. You know, yesterday we talked to Randy McCowan at some length and we asked him about Coach Dwayne. We asked him about the inspiration and what it's like working with him day in and day out. I take a step back and say, man, look at Coach Dory. You know, look at he's, how much courage and, and faith he has of going out every day and putting his best effort in. And so it really kind of, I really kind of feed off him as far as the courage and, and amount of effort that he's putting in to getting this ball team better. And it just really kind of fuels my desire to get better certainly has been an inspiration to everybody on that team and really throughout the state of Texas. Absolutely. Third down and 11, McCown on the quarterback draw. Back to the 25. And so the Aggies will have to punt it. I've got a question. Up 17 with three minutes to go, backed up like that, exposing your quarterback. And he's limping. They can't afford to lose him. Timeout Southern Miss. They stopped the clock with 325 left and down 23 to 6. Still rocking as a matter of fact, 325, 326. This is a high Been a good day for the punters. Bad day for the snappers, and a horrible day for the offense of Southern Miss. Well, time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. That's all coming your way here on ABC Sports. Boy, they do love their football here, don't they, in Aggie Land? Big fans. Great Terrific scene. Terrific fans. Cable Davis still in the ballgame at quarterback for Southern Miss. It's been a tough afternoon for that young man. Backside pressure almost threw another one. Cornelius Anthony, number 46, in a maroon jersey was the only guy close. Tim, these aren't close. I mean, there is a lot of confusion there. And, and I know that uh, Jeff and his staff have committed to Cable Davis. He may end up being an All-American. Who knows? But uh, those passes aren't close. Well, I like their football team, though, Dean. I oh, like I the way too. they approach the game. I like their defense, and I have just fallen in love with Adelius Thomas. He is an outstanding player. Well, I've fallen in love with him and Slaughter. TJ and AD are okay. Davis again with a lot of pressure, and this one is almost intercepted. It was intended for Todd Pinkston, but never did get through first the line, then the linebackers, and eventually into the secondary where it was almost intercepted. You know, the guys in white have shown themselves to be very resilient. I was really impressed with what they did coming out of the third quarter at Lincoln last week. They really stuck it to Nebraska when a lesser team would have folded, but Jeff Bauer's personality is that of a battler, and so is his club. So it's third down and 10. Golden Eagles need a big play. There's pressure coming off the back foot again and again. It is almost intercepted. Jason Webster almost had another one. Well. Got those nervous feet now. Well, he does. And we're going to show you. We're going to stop this in the middle of the back pedal and show you how he's moving. One, two, three, stop, right there. I don't know if that was a three-step or a five-step, but he's going back about seven or eight and moving the feet. So the quarterback either takes three or five and gets rid of it, and that's just a sign of being intimidated. Three balls there could have been intercepted on that series. So Jamie Purser's starting to get leg weary. The fake punt. Incomplete. 
Hey, I respect Jeff Bauer for calling that because there's a good chance now with 2.56 to go that they will give up more points, but he doesn't care about the scoreboard. He's wanting a chance to win the football game, so hand it to him. Well, Fowler was well covered, and certainly Purser threw a decent pass, but I agree with you. It's a, at this point, 2.56 to play, go for it. I don't know many coaches that would do that, though. That's, I don't know many that would do Certainly you go ahead and throw the three, but, you but that's do know, gutsy. You do know if you don't get it, the floodgates open. Right. Been a frustrating afternoon for him. Yeah, because he's got a good club. He felt that his team had a real good chance of winning. Twos. And so did R.C. Slope to the 30. Well, there's no question R.C. said this would be their toughest opponent of the year. Or, or thus far, anyway. Right, and, and, and he felt that uh, defensively, he didn't know if they would find a meet a defense any tougher than this bunch. Next up for Texas A&M is at Texas Tech, and for Southern Miss, they move on and play at East Carolina. I get the feeling there are several players out there in white today that could start for Texas A&M. Slaughter's a real good player, AD. There's several on the defensive side. And of course, the two receivers are just terrific. You know, Jeff Bauer took a lot of criticism for playing Nebraska, playing Texas a and playing Alabama. What do you think? Well, I think that he's the same guy that had the, the punter throw a pass a minute ago. He wants to take on all comers. He's got an aggressive personality when it comes to that. The funny thing is he's not an aggressive guy off the field, but he is in coaching. Well, the Chevrolet players of the game are TJ Slaughter and Jason Webster. Boy, what a Great game both of those guys played this afternoon. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to their high school. So that'll be John Carroll High School in Birmingham, Alabama for TJ Slaughter. And for Jason Webster, it's Willow Ridge High School in Houston, Texas. Boy, what a day for Slaughter. 21 tackles, six for loss. And for Webster, 10 tackles, two for loss, and one interception. So my trivia question to you is when's the last game you what's the last game you were a part of where the two MVPs were defensive players? Well, you know, I cannot even remember. It's been a long time. But it's fun to see it. There you go. We we, we thought it come happen. 125 to play in the ball game. Well, Texas A&M now will go to 3-0. and And I mean, they had big wins against Tulsa, against Louisiana Tech, and now against Southern Miss. They'll start to step up the competition and get into the conference play, and certainly that'll indicate how good they really are. But they're ranked fifth, and it's not that difficult of a schedule. And with that defense, they've got a legitimate shot, not only at the Big 12 title again, but certainly a national championship run. Well, I agree. If you look at what they have coming up, they're at Texas Tech, and Spike Dykes and his bunch is struggling right now. Baylor uh, is really struggling. I was going to say anemic. That may be a little strong. Kansas, you know, they will be a heavy favorite there. Oklahoma is playing much better, but they have them here. And I would expect that they would be a heavy favorite there. Oklahoma State and Nebraska would be the first uh, huge test for them. Second down and long. Eric Bernard gets a couple of tough yards. Maybe I should put it this way. Looking at their schedule, if they were to play tomorrow, all the teams on their schedule, they would be an underdog only at Nebraska. And that's kind of iffy. You know, I don't know what to, how they would match up with Nebraska if they play tomorrow, but they would certainly be favored in every other game to win. So we're down to the last 15 seconds in College Station, Texas. And Texas A&M's wrecking crew certainly has dominated the play this afternoon. This should be the last play of the day. Randy McCown gives it straight ahead. That'll do it. Texas A&M goes to 3-0. And Southern Miss will go to 2-2. Two and two. Final score, Texas A&M 23. The Golden Eagles of Southern Miss, 6. R.C. Slocum and the fifth-ranked Texas A&M Aggies just continue to roll on.
tonight uh, game coming your way. Don't forget about it. The San Francisco 49ers travel to Arizona to face the Cardinals in a key NFC matchup. ABC's Monday Night Football. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. For Dean Blevins, I'm Tim Brandt. Once again, the final score, Texas A&M 23 and Southern Miss 6. Thrifty car rental post-game report coming up right after these messages. I'll bet you were pretty nerdy when you were young.